Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome back to my channel. All right, everyone, I am so happy to report that I have some functioning crafting arms and I've got some nautical DIYs for you today. Nautical is all over the place right now. You're seeing it in Dollar Tree stores and these are some really fun DIY projects and there are honestly some projects that you could use outside of the nautical realm if you really really wanted to. As you know a lot of this is just paint and styling. Um, I don't actually have a lot of nautical DIYs that are in my home so um, I don't even have a lot of like nautical decor but I am going to be giving these away to some neighbors and some friends of mine. So I hope that they enjoy them as much as you guys do. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, everyone, and for project number one, we're going to take this nautical rope that is quite thin from a Dollar Tree, but actually it works out good for this project. And then I have this wood canvas that I picked up from Dollar Tree in the Dollar Tree Plus section. That's why you saw that it was $3. Go ahead and remove all the plastic and discard that. And then we are going to get started. I'm going to want to drill some holes in this because I'm actually going to be using this as a tray. And I want to be able to put some handles on this tray. And since we're going Going with kind of a nautical vibe for this one, I wanted to make sure that I had even holes, but then also something that I can put that nautical rope through. So I'm going to go ahead and just count down. I think I did about three and a half inches on each side using my ruler there. And then I just went ahead and grabbed the biggest drill bit that I had, which happened to be just barely big enough. And I drilled right into this. And, um, no, this is not the best way to drill. Um, if you have a clamp, if you have a workshop, that's really the best way. Um, especially put some wood underneath your work surface, unlike I'm doing right here, because uh, you don't want to drill through your desk or through your mat like I have done on a variety of times. So um, don't, uh, don't, just don't do it this way. Make sure you're being safe out there. And then after you've got those holes drilled through, you are ready to go. And you can just kind of sand those off a little bit and set that to the side. Go ahead and take some of your painter's tape. This is painter's tape that I picked up at Dollar Tree. It's actually okay. I wouldn't say it's the greatest painter's tape in the world, but for this project, it did actually work out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try and get it as straight as possible. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. And um, the great thing about kind of doing these straight lines is that you can really kind of almost tell sometimes when you're not going to be exact. If you wanted to be exact, by all means, take a ruler. Um, you could easily put a ruler down the middle of that tray and then just draw a straight line with that. If you've got a level, you could certainly do that as well. Um, you know me, I'm a little more of a free spirit, so I'm going to go ahead and just trace it out. And then once I do have that taped off, I am going to go ahead and tape the excess and I'm just going to flip it around to the sides because the striping effect that I'm going to be doing is going to go not only on the bottom of the tray but it's also going to go over the left and the right side and then kind of overlap onto the edge and then I'm going to go ahead and take another piece of painter's tape and I'm going to repeat that same process giving my tray kind of a double stripe look if you will if you wanted to make sure that your tray was I don't know maybe a little thinner with the stripes, you could use washi tape. There's a lot of different tapes that you could use, but as you can see here, I've just gone ahead and used my painter's tape. And then I'm just making sure that everything is nice and snug, just so no paint will leak through here. So for the first part, or for the largest part of the tray, I'm gonna go ahead and use my antiquing wax. Now, you know me, I love antiquing wax. I also love the look of just regular wood. So that's kind of my thoughts with the part that is already taped off. If I had maybe this really cool effect with this brown kind of antiquing wax, and then if I had that natural wood, it could be really, really cool. And then I could paint and could, would kind of play off some of the other colors that we've got here. So go ahead and put your antiquing wax on as heavy as you want, making sure you get into all those little cracks and crevices and crannies there, and then you're gonna wipe away any of that excess. And then once you've wiped away that excess, 
and dry that off. Pull out your heat gun, do whatever you need to do to make sure that that is good and ready to go. Then you can move on to your next color. So for our next color, we are actually going to be using white. This is just a white chalk paint that I've got. And I'm just going to go down the center here and we're going to make sure that this is nice and bright and white. So I did do two coats for this. Once that is nice and dry and ready to go, again, taking out that heat gun, then I painted the other part of the tray, and I'm doing that in my favorite color, blue. This is a nautical blue color that is, I believe, by Waverly, and it is one of my favorite colors, and I use this a lot. Now, I have found if you do two to three coats of this, it does make it nice and dark, and it does make it a really rich, vibrant color. Then, of course, you're going to take out your heat gun again and just make sure that all of your paint is dry. Not only that nautical blue that I just added there, but also, of course, your white. Go ahead and touch up any spots that you may need with another paintbrush. And then just make sure that all of those are dry. For me, anytime I'm working with anything that's wood, I do like to typically use my heat gun. I just make sure that everything is dry, especially before I peel away any of the painter's tape. Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. If you guys know of a better way to uh, prevent some of that seepage that happens, certainly leave it for me in the comments below. I would love to hear it. And then this is the fun part. Anytime you're working with painter's tape, being able to pull away that painter's tape. And as you can see, I've got some great lines here. There's some seepage, but that's okay because it kind of works with the nautical vibe that we're doing here. And again, I am super, super happy with this. Now, the next thing we're going to do is just feed our ropes through here. Now, I didn't show you, but um, all I'm doing is taking my nautical rope. I'm just going to double it. I'm going to cut that in half. That way I have two pieces for each side that are the same. I literally just fed this into the hole and I added some hot glue. That was all I did. That way this tray fits nice and flat on the surface. If you wanted to, you could even tie a knot at the end of your rope and then use those as the feet of your tray. Either way, so, so cute. Absolutely love the way this turned out. It's so fun by itself, but it's definitely fun when you style it and you've got something fantastic to use for your summer porch or your summer patio. Definitely good for cocktails. I'm super, super happy with this one. And then for the next project, we are going to take two of these dollar store flowers that I picked up. I loved these the moment I saw them. They're in the regular dollar section. And um, I... I wanted to find like 10 of these, but unfortunately I could only find two. And I had these two candle holders on hold, or not on hold, in my stash here at home. And I thought that they could be fun. When I started looking at them and playing with them, I don't know, they kind of reminded me of something that looks like a seashell. There was something about the texture on there that I just thought gave me a cool kind of seashelly vibe. So go ahead and remove these hangers off the back of these because you're not gonna need these. You can go ahead and just kind of pry them off with a pair of pliers. And then you're going to take a candle holder. I do recommend kind of a rounded candle holder if you can do it. And you're going to just kind of bend your metal flower around the base of your candle holder. Now you kind of push down the center like I've done there and hold it down and then kind of bend those leaves around. And then almost what you're doing is kind of flattening them off and see, see how I've kind of squared off the bottom almost a little bit there or at least tried to make it somewhat flat, that's going to help you when you're using these for your candle holders. Now, depending on what kind of candle holder you have, whether you've got something that's square or rounded, that is going to kind of depend on how your your uh, kind of foldability, if you will, is going to be around the base there. Now you can see here, I'm kind of squaring it off to give it more of a formalized base because I do want these to be nice and sturdy and sitting up on my coffee table. And then for the pink one, I'm doing the same exact thing here. And when they're all done, you're gonna have these kind of two cup shapes that we're gonna take outside and spray paint.
Now, you know, in my house, I like to use a lot of navy, and I also like to use the copper, the color copper as my accent color. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray both of these with my copper spray paint here. Now, again, if you wanted this to be nautical, paint them white, paint them navy, stripe them. I think that there could be a lot of really fun things to do, but this is what they look like when they're all done. I absolutely love these. I love the way they look. I think that they are so elegant looking, and they look a a lot like something you'd find in a very expensive boutique. Now this next project is actually going to be really, really easy. We're going to take some Valentine's decor. We're going to take some of these sand dollars that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And then I have this great scrapbook that's got these like vintage maps. And of course, I grabbed a blue piece because hello, that's my favorite color. Now these signs, if you can get your hands on them, whether they're Valentine's Day or Easter or spring or whatever they are, especially these that have the removable backs and the wood beads at the top. They're so good. You can use them for so many different projects. And as you can see here, I am going to cover this BU with this great scrapbook paper that I have. Now, for mine, rather than um, kind of gluing on top of the BU um, kind of uh, writing or uh, front there, I'm actually just going to cut this out and then I'm going to flip this over on the other side. Now, you can take a Sharpie, you can take a pencil, a pen, whatever you have handy, and just kind of trace around. I'm using just a regular glue stick. This is the Jot glue stick, which is actually from Dollar Tree, and it works out pretty good. And uh, you could use Mod Podge if you wanted to. I actually really just like to use glue. Go ahead and glue that down and let that say solid. Now, when you put it back with your sign, it looks really, really good. I love the way that this looks, even just like this. But when you take one of those Dollar Tree sand dollars and you add some glue to the back of it. Now, I'm going to add a pretty generous amount of hot glue. I'm just kind of tracing around the edge of it because... Um, that really is the part that sticks the best, you know, or lays flat against the surface. And then I'm gonna add a couple globs of my hot glue just kind of in the center there. And we are just going to take my sand dollar and we're going to dead center it right in the middle here. And as you can see, it creates such a cool, very high-end look. I think that a bunch of these in the bathroom would be amazing. Even without the beads, these would be incredible. Now, my next item was actually inspired by something I went into Home Goods for recently. Um, I was shopping in Home Goods. I was just kind of looking around, noticing a lot of the summer. Nautical is obviously very popular, and I saw a lot of ships. And then when I was in Dollar Tree, I saw this little wooden ship and I thought well this little sailboat could be fun and you could spray paint this and make this decor and maybe this could be a fun accent piece I know like for my bathroom in particular I have some built-in shelving so if I wanted to have a nautical vibe in there I could totally do that now this little boat does come in a lot of different pieces. However, there are some great instructions on the back, and these are actually really, really easy to follow. And it does include wood glue as well, if you did want to use that. Now, I have a wood glue from Shorebinder, so that is what I loaded up into my glue gun, and that's what I'm using here. So I just started kind of gluing down the pieces in, you know, in order of the directions, and just kind of following them. And then after everything was all assembled, instead of putting the sail on it, I took it outside to spray paint it. Now, I did intend to spray paint this navy, but my navy spray paint did not work. I don't know what is wrong with it. It is clogged. There's something going on, but I had to use my default color, which was the one that I grabbed immediately to the left, and it was purple. So yes, I now have a purple sailboat. Now, personally, I don't think a purple sailboat is the worst thing in the world that I could certainly be uh, sailing around, you know, the world in. And uh, for the sails, I decided just to use some scotch tape. Now, you may remember if you saw me or follow me on Instagram, I did do a sailboat making class when I was in San Francisco, and they actually used tape to apply the sails, and I thought it was a pretty good idea. So I just replicated it here. And again, I think this is so cute, such a fun accent piece. If you've got a little boy or little girl's room, this could be something so cute on a shelf. And I really, really love the way that this turned out. 
Now, for the next project, this is actually going to come from Target Dollar Spot. And uh, I've got this set of vases. Both of them were $3. And uh, for $1.50 a vase, I thought that that was actually really, really good. Now, for the larger one, I'm actually going to put that aside. We're not going to use that one today. We're going to save that for another project in the future. And then for the shorter blue one, I wanted to do something that was kind of a nautical twist. But then it would be something that I could use in my decor because I do like like a lot of navy and so I'm using the sea glass spray. Now the great thing about the sea glass spray is as dark as you want to spray it that is however many coats you need. Now I got it in this great color that I love right now and I've got these anchors that I also picked up from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of whitewash one of them. I wanted this to kind of be an odor, you know, a nod to nautical for the video. I'm probably gonna end up taking the anchor off because again, it just doesn't go with my vibe personally. And uh, again, I'm keeping this one. This is one that's not going to the neighbor, but this blue color vase is going to be so, so cute. Now, if you've picked up these anchors or the seahorses, or the starfish or any of the other ones that you see, you can really do a lot of fun things. And I just took some red and white twine, tied it around the neck of the sea glass bottle. And again, so, so cute. Look how adorable it looks, especially with that Dollar Tree sailboat. You've got that Dollar Tree sandcastle out there. You can do a lot of really cute and fun things with this. All right, for this next DIY, this is a tray that is kind of on this uh, trivet thing, but the only problem is the piece down here that holds it together is missing. So I'm going to actually glue mine together. This was the last tray that they had at Target Dollar Spot, and I wanted it. Now, if you've seen these little, like, unfinished wood clips, you need to look for the finished ones. Look at these cute little sailboats. I thought that these could be perfect, and for someone like myself, that's not a very good painter these already painted are going to come in really 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 handy now take your heat gun just apply a little bit of heat to this be careful because the uh you know the metal pieces on this on the uh clothespin there they will get hot so you'll want to just be careful when you're doing this but as you kind of activate that glue you can see that everything comes apart easily now i did use two packages of these sailboats go ahead and put your clothespins aside because again you can use those for another project and then just kind of sit there patiently and, you know, just kind of start unsticking these. Now, I took four or five of them at a time and we just lay them flat and then just kind of run my heat gun over top of them. And then, as you can see, everything comes free. Now, for the handles, I wanted to wrap them in this great rope that I found from Dollar Tree. Again, this is a great nautical kind of vibe and I love the way this looked and I thought that this would really pop against this white tray. I originally was going to paint the tray a blue color but then I really started to look at the sailboats and the, the rope and everything and I thought that just keeping it regular white would be perfect. So I am just going to take this rope and I am simply just going to start gluing it down. I'm going to feed it all around those handles, in and out, in and out, and wrapping it with a little bit of glue along the way. And I'm just using regular hot glue for this. And we are going to cover both sides of the tray or on the handles there. Now, I will tell you, this rope, it frays. It frays so much. It's got those little hairs. It like gets all over the place. It's gonna get inside the tray. It's going to get all over your workstation. This is not the greatest quality rope. However, I will say, once you add a little bit of fire to it and kind of burn off those frays, it actually does look really, really nice. Of course, if you're doing this, you want to be careful. You don't want to set, you know, your house on fire or burn yourself or anything like that. So certainly be careful. Do it in smaller batches you know, blow on it a whole lot. Make sure that you've got all that flame kind of burned out. But as you can see, it really does change the look of that rope and it makes it look really, really cool. Now for these little sailboats, all I'm gonna do is take them and start gluing them along the sides of the tray. Now I always kind of start at one side and then start at the other side, and then I'll take another one and put it in the middle, and then kind of add as I go. For me, I'm just eyeballing these. You know me, I tend to eyeball a lot of stuff, and it works out for me. It works out for me for the most part, I should say. 
And uh, with these, again, just kind of did that same exact process. I had five sailboats on each side. And when it's all done, you've got the cutest little tray. And what's so great about this, I didn't spray paint the inside of this. So you could use this for food if this is food safe. I don't remember what the sticker said. But again, it's so cute to use for like just the staging thing, almost like a tiered tray effect. Again, super, super cute. I love this so much. And by the way, if you don't know Veluspa Candles, check them out as well. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed these. Please let me know in the comments below which ones were your absolute favorites. I think the tray is definitely my favorite. I'm probably going to keep the tray, to be honest. I think that would look really good on my deck that I'm going to be doing very, very soon. I'm not redoing it, just going to be putting things back out on the deck. I always hide my uh, furniture in the wintertime and I pull it out after pollen season. And then when I broke this guy right here, this is where it was broken. You can still see the little lump there. Um, yeah, anyway. I can put it out now. So uh, I'll be putting it out soon. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.